Hello everyone and welcome to the Collider video non-spoiler review of the new Pixar film Finding Dory. This aquatic adventure we will give away nothing as far as what actually happens in the movie, but we are going to talk about a number of different things about Finding Dory, particularly can this movie follow its predecessor Finding Nemo and is it a fun adventure on its own? Here to help me decipher just that in the review is Dennis Zen. Hey, thanks for uh, having me on the show. Oh, you're oh, welcome, Dennis. Yeah. Anytime you can come into this panel. It's, it's, it's the Mark show. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> anything but the Mark show. But if it was the Mark show, my special guest would always be Perry Aww, Nemiroff. Aw, thank you. Even though I didn't dress for the part, this is a very kid-appropriate t-shirt, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a collider nightmare day here. I actually have a Pixar shirt I was going to wear, and it's got all the different Pixar movies on the shirt, and I uh, couldn't find it, so I just decided to rock out, even though I can't play guitar. But I I can swim very well, so I know a little bit about water going into Finding Dory, and my big concern, as I mentioned up top, is is this going to be able to follow Finding Nemo, or more importantly, is this going to be the same story as Finding Nemo? In that film, Nemo gets lost, and his dad has to go find him. We know in this film from the trailer that Dory is going to try to find her family. She wants to go see where she came from, and there's a problem in that she has a very poor short-term memory, but she starts to get these flashbacks, these dream sequences almost like Rey in The Force Awakens and she sets off on an adventure now we gotta go find Dory and see if she can realize her goal of meeting her past Dennis how did you feel about this movie overall uh, I quite enjoyed this film. I think it's a worthy sequel to Finding Nemo, which is one of my favorite Pixar films. Is it as good as it? No, but I think it does a good job. One of the concerns I had was the character of Dory, you know, she was a great supporting character in the in the first film. However, we were wondering if she could kind of carry this film as a character and kind of they kind of fixed that problem because even though she's the main character and it is about her, the supporting cast is 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 fantastic. We bring back, you know, Nemo in the father, and we have this great new character, Hank, uh, voiced by Ed O'Neill, who was my favorite character in the whole film. And there's all these other characters that are supporting, so it doesn't have to weigh totally on her. That's right. And Perry, when you look at what the point that Dennis brought up is, is whether Dory can go from being a secondary character, kind of like the Incredible Hulk of the Pixar universe, into leading a film. How did you think that the fish voiced by Ellen DeGeneres pulled that off? Well, first off, I think Ellen DeGeneres is fantastic. It's incredible to me how she has such a distinct voice, yet not mm -hmm. for a second are you watching this movie and thinking, oh, Dory, Ellen. I, no, you're not making that connection at all. And I think, yes, Dory can sustain her own movie here. I think they do they do a lot of cool things with the memory loss that tries to make it a little more meaningful and actually turn it into a character journey versus just like a fun little flaw she has. And it really approaches it as a disability that she needs to learn to accept and work around. It gets a little messy. Finding the, I, I will agree with you. I, I love this movie. I mean, my face, that's destiny on the screen behind Dennis there. My <laughs> face looked like that the large majority of the movie but it's not as neat of a story. Finding Nemo is very simple. Find Nemo, family comes together, that's it. Here, it gets very sloppy, especially in the third act of the movie. So you're gonna say that if you were a shark, you would be a whale shark? That's the kind of shark that you want to be if you had to be a shark. That's a big question. I didn't prepare for that. I had a hard enough time figuring out what my rating for this movie was going to be. I needed prep for that question. Oh, hey, you know what? As Dennis said, it's the Mark oh, Ellis show. We're going to throw oh, some curveballs yeah. here. And I, this, this might be a curveball to some of you guys. I hadn't seen Finding Nemo until a couple of years ago. I don't wow. know why. What? I don't know. What? I was a horrible, horrible person for an entire decade. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised the law didn't get a hold of the news. After I saw it, I immediately fell in love with it. And I was looking forward to Finding Dory. After the second trailer, I was like, you know what? I think this is going to be more than just a re hash of Finding Nemo. I think we are going to tell a different story, a unique tale. And I think we ended up getting that. And it's something that I was delighted. I was smiling from ear to ear watching this entire film. I know that you're going to get a sense of humor with Pixar and that the writing is going to be top notch. I just didn't realize how funny this movie was going to be and particularly where the comedy was going to come from. Because you bring up a great point, Perry. The voice of Ellen DeGeneres, it might be one of the best uh, animated castings of all time, simply because a fish that has no short-term memory and keeps forgetting works so in concert with the way that Ellen's staccato delivery 
it, it, that's how she does a joke, and you feel like that's how Dory's brain works as well. But there's no lack of performance ability from somebody like an Albert Brooks or somebody like an Ed O'Neill, who I was very much looking forward to what he was going to do as the octopus mm -hmm. Hank, and he made me laugh so much. This entire movie, I love the journey. I will give you the um, the point that it does feel a little loose-ended mm -hmm. towards the end or it just gets a little bit of away from how tight of a story we had. But I can forgive that simply because I laugh so much. I mean, the sea lions, are you kidding me? <laughs> they were so, the turtles are great. Everybody comes to play in this movie. I can forgive it too. And it's because it, the messiness of the third act doesn't really have anything to do with character flaws or, or lack of a, of a build and a payoff for them. It's just about how they navigate the space. It feels very haphazard how they get from one space to the next. But at the same time, I have to forgive it as well because as they go from one space to the next, you meet this incredible cast of supporting characters. Hank, one of my new favorite Pixar characters right there. I thought... Ed O'Neill was absolutely perfect. He sounds a little bit like Albert Brooks, though, which took a little <laughs> adjusting. But in terms of Ellen DeGeneres really quickly, one of the coolest things about her performance is that, one, she nails the comedy, but then she's also able to switch gears so quickly and actually make you believe that, that Dory's sad. And we don't really get too much of that in the first movie. Dory is mostly just, she's comedic relief, and she's there to be happy. and. And all of that, but here there's there's a really touching element to her story. That's right, and it's surprising to hear that there is such depth to a character that can't remember anything. Dennis, the emotional notes this movie hits, it doesn't do the thing that sometimes Pixar films will do, where it just wants to rip your heart out mm. right off the bat. But you do get the feels watching this movie. Was that was that your experience as well? I think for the most part, I think definitely you can identify and f empathize with the Dory character and what she's going through. I think at times. Maybe they, they kind of try to shoehorn some things in there. But overall, I thought it was pretty good. And and, and I didn't realize that, that Hank was going to be such a big part of this movie. I You know, with Ed O'Neill and Ellen DeGeneres, I thought it was mainly going to be Dory. And then also with with Nemo and uh, Marlon, the father. So that's why I, what I meant is like, it feels more like, even though it's Finding Dory, it felt more like an ensemble piece to me. It really did, yeah. It was almost like an Ocean's Eleven, and I mean that pun, I guess, intended. But, I mean, look, again, I, I guess we can talk about some things that we touched on earlier as far as things that maybe let us down a little bit or why this might not be the greatest Pixar film of all time. Perry, what stands out to you besides the, the messiness that might infiltrate the last part of this movie? Is there anything else that bugged you? It, I mean, I guess it is. If I'm nitpicking at the movie, it's a little heavy-handed. It does beat you over the head with certain things, and I'm I'm trying so hard not to give away any spoilers. But we're ta we're talking about a movie with talking fish, but the ending was so ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's fun to watch, and it doesn't ruin the movie by any means. But it's a little over the top there. There's a great uh, a great uh, mid '90s comedy called Nine Months, which is just a fun movie from start to finish. It's got Hugh Grant, Julianne Moore in it, and it's a great watch. The end is like real, none of this is plausible, but you still have fun with it because you you enjoyed the ride up to that point. That's how I feel about Finding Dory. Dennis, is there anything else that that let you down? about this movie no not so much letting down it's just more of a you know the the jumping around within the 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 place that they go to i guess it, it just seemed a little more confined than finding one of the things i loved about finding nemo so much was that it felt like this big ocean and this one kind of brings it down to a kind of a smaller location and so i didn't get that aspect of, of what I loved about Finding Nemo. Yeah, that's an excellent point, is that there is a lot of searching in this movie. It's called Finding Dory, but it's not necessarily the searching or the space exploration that I thought it might be. However, the movie does do a great job of separating itself from Finding Nemo while still maintaining a lot of the notes that we loved about that movie so much. So putting a nice little bow on this discussion, I'll kick off first with my score, my ranking. I know Perry's been thinking about it since we kicked off the <laughs> She's shoot. like nervous about it. She's like very apprehensive. I'm telling you, every review this comes up people probably not the score makes me so anxious I'm fine talking about a movie when it comes to pinpointing one specific number to tell you exactly how I feel about everything in a movie so much anxiety there, there's right no there. pressure on you this is just the number that's going to be associated with you for for all time it's awful. for all time because someone will come answer. back to it oh Perry you only gave this a blah 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 <laughs> I'm going to kick it off, and I'll set the bar very high for both you and Dennis, because I, I loved watching this movie. It's not 
one of Pixar's all-time greats, but it's a very enjoyable sequel. And I'm going to go 8.75 out of 10 for Finding Dory. It sounds even high when I'm saying it, but I just I mm-hmm. laughed so much watching this movie. It really separated itself with how funny it was. Dennis? I'm going to give it an 8.5. I found it very enjoyable. I think... You know, it, it's almost unfair to try and compare it to what I believe to be one of Pixar's best films. But uh, of course, because it's the sequel to that one, you have to. But I, I found that there's a lot of heart to it, comedy, uh, you know, new, brand new characters. The voice acting's great in it. I mean, we didn't talk about Ty Burrell as, as uh, one of the other Modern Family mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> cast members that's also doing voices. There's so many great little uh, characters that just pop up, maybe for five minutes, maybe for 10 minutes, but they're all enjoyable. Um, And so, yeah, I I recommend it. You know what? The stuff that I think that we kind of criticize it for, which are, yeah, small things, kids have, they're not going to care whatsoever. They're going to watch the movie and they're going to love it. I'm a little bit older than a kid and I didn't care for Mm. most of it. So we have an eight and a half and we have an eight and three quarters, Perry. I hate to do this, but the spotlight is now yeah, on you. Yeah, thanks, You're man. not a math expert, but we do no, need a yeah. number from I, one to ten. <laughs> I wasn't good at math. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go a little lower, but still very high, and give it an eight. And even though we nitpick certain things, I will say we need movies like this. This is a movie that, to me, just like radiates pure joy. And, you know, nowadays, and with all this dark, violent stuff in the real world and in the movies as well, I mean... This is just the greatest thing. We need more movies like this that's just happy and and celebrating who everyone is. The whole just keep swimming thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's redundant. You hear it over and over, but we need to hear that all the time. I want to hear that every single day. So I really appreciated that. And I know this is a review of Finding Dory, but I want to point out that Piper, the short film that plays before... uh, Every Pixar film has a short that plays before, and this one is Piper and the sweetest thing. I mean, that might be one of my favorite Pixar shorts ever. It does not feature a dog. Some of the greatest Pixar shorts do, in mm-hmm. fact, feature a dog. Feast, like Feast is delightful. But this one so reminded me of how my girlfriend and her dog, Molly, interact. And uh, it was, Piper is one of the better ones. Dennis, did you enjoy Piper as much? Yeah, as I thought it was really good. I, I, this is kind of a little side note. With both Piper and Finding Dory, they have, animation-wise, kind of... Did you guys watch The Good Dinosaur? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the environments in those went from cartoony now to realistic, and they've employed that in Piper at the, at the beach in the, in the water, and also in Finding Dory. There's elements in it where obviously the characters all cartoony, but there are certain environments where they go to that style, especially with the water. I'm just wondering how far they're going to go with that in yeah. future ones, because eventually it's not like they want to make everything realistic. You know, it's not like I guess we just saw something like Jungle Book where they try to make everything realistic. We're not going to watch Pixar films and have like, this looks like a real fish. It's still going to have cartoony. I'm just wondering how far they're going to go with that. We Dennis, we've, spoke we've about had this how... conversation. Real fish cannot talk. Huh. Oh, really? I, I'm sorry to do this again. I also, I heard, Did also you know heard, there's I, no dragons? Yes, I heard there's <laughs> no dragons, dragons either. <laughs> it's weird. Just having his heart broken left But and we right. didn't talk about how good the animation of Hank is. It's such a dynamic character. He mm-hmm. Hank can uh, can camouflage, mm-hmm. and just the way he moves around the screen, and the way he interacts with Dory, and how he camouflages, just spot on animation. And you know, there. whereas the cars in the Cars One and Two look like they're cartoon cars, the the automobiles that you'll see sometimes in this movie, they look like real automobiles. Like like, like I would have bought that's a real scene that they just put into a Pixar movie. And there's a lot of nods uh, to the first movie as well. You know, when you talked about Just Keep Swimming, there's almost like kind of an origin aspect to certain things. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you guys stopping swimming for just a little bit and letting us give you our review of Finding Dory here at Collider Video. Make sure you subscribe to Collider Video for all these reviews and, of course, Movie Talk each and every weekday. Uh, Dennis, where can everybody out there in the world find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero and Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And over there is Perry Nemeroff. Where can everybody find you? 
Well, apparently I've been looking at the wrong camera the entire review, so you can find me on Twitter. You were thinking about your score, man. You were getting in your head. I'm so distracted. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at PNMROF. I'm on Collider Nightmares every Tuesday and Best of the Week every Saturday. And we promise you, her Twitter avatar, she's actually looking into the right camera. It's been a long day here. You know what you need to do? You need to go home. You need to relax. And you probably need to watch Finding Nemo and then go out and see Finding Dory with, I'm sure, the the millions of other people that are going to be checking this movie out this week weekend. That's all for us here at Collider Video. Thank you guys so much. My name is Mark Ellis. You can just find me simply at Mark Ellis Live, and we'll see you guys next time here at Collider. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.